Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encuentra la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Fellow travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. I am your host, Perry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination in the entire world. Maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you were just listening to is performed by Alberto Perez. Now, Alberto is the owner of the La Palapa Group of Restaurants. Those are the La Palapa, the El Dorado Restaurant, and at night for dinner, the El Dorado transforms into the ever-so-romantic Vista Grill with those dramatic views of the Los Muertos Pier all lit up at night in beautiful colors. Of course, at La Palapa, you can enjoy that very same view of the Los Muertos Pier all day long for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's so... Puerto Vallarta, my friends. Today, we're going to be talking with two great guests. Both are involved in the property rental business here in Puerto Vallarta. But first, let's talk about what's happening this week, September 12th, 2017. We will be celebrating Mexican Independence Day in Vallarta, and in true Mexican fashion, it's not just one day, folks. We're going to be celebrating for four days. That's right. So let's go through what's happening here. Uh, Things start up on Thursday, September 14th, the day of the Charo, and it's celebrated in many parts of Mexico. Charos are regal horsemen and women who dress just so stylishly, and they ride so smoothly. They're just elegant cowboys and cowgirls of Mexico. Uh, Chariera is a tradition. It runs in families. This is passed on from one generation to another, obviously. As soon as a, as a child can actually sit on a horse by himself or herself, they become a little charo. Or if you're a girl, uh, she becomes a escaramusa. Now, don't miss this if you guys are in town. The charo wears a, a special suit. There are five styles of charo outfits, and each one is chosen for its own occasion to be worn. One can go from a working suit through dressy, formal, elegant, all the way to black tie. And the color doesn't seem to be as important as the cut of the suit. The jacket is snug-fitting. It comes only to the waist. Some are heavily embroidered. You've seen these things. And the pants, they have slim, tight-fitting legs. And the dressier ones have gold or silver buttons that run along the outside length of the leg. You've seen them. I've seen them. The suit is worn with a short boot, not the regular cowboy boot, and a bow tie, and white shirt, and the typical big, broad-rimmed sombrero, embroidered usually, tops off this costume. Uh, Vallarta's city center is going to be hosting a parade of associations of charros, so this is going to be totally cool. And they ride on horseback through the main streets uh, in downtown, and also along the Malacan. And people kind of line the route, and they applaud these great-looking horsemen and horsewomen as they parade through town in their fine outfits. So if you want to learn more about the traditions of these horsemen and women, the Charos, I have a link to an article written back in 2007 by, by Jenny McGill. And if you've listened to my older podcasts, you would know that Jenny McGill and her husband Howard lived uh, in, in Puerto Vallarta in 1973, where she served as a U.S. consular agent for 14 years. And she wrote that book that we talked about called Drama and Diplomacy in Sultry Puerto Vallarta. It's a pretty fun read. talks about 
all the strange and wild things that she encountered uh, when she was working for the consular's office there in Puerto Vallarta. If you haven't gotten that book, you need to order it, get it, read it. It's a lot of fun. It's short, so you read it and share it. Um, now, here's an interesting note. You remember Pamela Thompson of Healthcare Resources, Puerto Vallarta, and we talked with her about medical tourism in Puerto Vallarta in an earlier episode. You remember that? Well, she does a lot of things that Jenny did back in the day. Um, interestingly enough, I bet that Pamela could write a pretty juicy book herself. But, eh, she probably would have to move out of town forever. We need you, Pam, so guess what? Don't write the book. At least, not now. Never mind. Anyway, Jenny is gone now, but her writing lives on, and I have a link to her article all about the day of the charro. <laughs> no, JR, not the day of the churro. That's every day here in Mexico, and uh, that reminds me, JR introduced me to the churro guy, and I'm going to have to introduce you to him too. But I digress. Where were we? Oh, yeah. I have a, um, a video, YouTube video, of the charros going through the streets of Puerto Vallarta on an earlier, um, earlier year. So check it out. You get a chance to see what you're missing or what you're going to see in person. It's going to be a lot of fun. So check that out. All right, so that was just the first day. Now we continue on with the celebrations. On the 15th is the day before Independence Day, and the festivities are going to begin at 8 a.m. in Puerto Vallarta with a commemoration of Independence at Plaza de Armas. And then in the evening at 7.30 p.m., the plaza will be hosting musical and dance performances until 10 p.m. And at 11 p.m., the Military Protocol Act of the Cry of Independence will take place at Presidential Plaza, followed by fireworks at midnight. Wow, what a day. So, what is this Cry of Independence? The Cry of Dolores, or in Spanish, Grito de Dolores, is a historical event that happened in Mexico in the early morning hours of the 16th of September in 1810. A Roman Catholic priest, Miguel Hidalgo y Castilla, rang the bell of his church and gave this proclamation, which was a call to arms that triggered the Mexican War of Independence. He proclaimed, My children, a new dispensation comes to us today. Will you receive it? Will you free yourselves? Will you recover the land stolen 300 years ago from your forefathers by the hated Spaniards? We must act at once. Will you defend your religion and your rights as true patriots? Long live our Lady of Guadalupe. Death to bad government. Death to the native Spaniards. This happened in the state of Guanajuato, within the small town of Dolores, known as Dolores Hidalgo. And although we aren't sure of the exact words, because they were never written down by him, they were pieced together by those who were assembled and could re recollect what he had said. Now, every year on the eve of Independence Day, the President of Mexico actually reenacts and recites the Grito from the balcony of the National Palace in Mexico City. And he does this while he rings the very same bell that the Catholic priest Hidalgo rang in 1810. Pretty cool, right? So, yeah, you just might want to catch that ceremony here in Vallarta. I'm guessing it's going to be great. Next, on the 16th, which is the official Independence Day, a parade will begin at 10 in the morning along Calle Morelos in downtown, and then beginning at 8 p.m., at the Arches on the Malacan, you're going to be able to catch musical performances by Gypsy Rumba, which is a great group who we've talked about with Gary Beck, remember? And Valentina Gonzalez is going to be there too. So it's going to be some fun, fun times. And then finally, on the 17th, since you haven't had your, you know, your fill of party yet, you can enjoy a taco fair in Lazaro Cardenas Park 
Uh, they're going to be selling traditional tacos such as steak or al pastor or lobster, shrimp, more, everything. So just make sure that when you're there, you wear a broad rimmed hat, some sunblock, because it's going to be hot, boys and girls. Now, I have information on all of those events. I've got pictures of all of the events as well in my show notes. So you got to check it out. That's going to be fun, 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 party, 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 four days of party in September in Puerto Vallarta. Who says nothing happens in September in Puerto Vallarta? I got an email. Um, oh, no, actually, it was an iTunes review uh, the other day from listener Polly. And Polly lives in Mexico, and she writes, Can you talk about San Pancho Beach next time? That would be nice. Well, Polly... I have an episode planned with a day trip to San Pancho. And just because you asked, I'm going to I'll push that up a little bit. We'll get that together for you in a few weeks. I have a couple other episodes that I want to get out first. I'm going to be talking with, uh, with my buddies in Tennessee, Reggie and, and his lovely wife, Donna. And I am also going to be talking with um, Felix Zarate about immigration issues. So, those are coming up first, Polly, but I will definitely talk about San Pancho Beach pretty soon. Uh, speaking of mail and reviews, I got a surprise note that I thought I'd share with you guys. If you were listening last week, I was telling you a story about my buddy Debbie from Canada. Remember? I referred to her in a loving way, of course, as Cheap Debbie. You remember? Okay. Check out this note I got from Tessa. My mom sent me one of your podcasts to listen to. The one about the Uber in PV. Well, my mom is Debbie G, a.k.a. also known as Cheap Debbie. <laughs> I thought you might like to hear about something that she did to me a couple years ago. Oh, boy. Do tell, Tessa, what did Cheap Debbie do to you? <clears throat> my parents had been in PV for a couple of weeks and I flew in, and, I, and they met me at the airport. We had some beers at the OXO, as is our tradition. And then I was expecting to go over the walking bridge and grab a yellow cab to the condo. Well, was I ever surprised when that didn't happen? My mom and dad thought, uh-oh. Okay, so dad's in on it too, right, Tessa? All right, I get it. All right, my mom and dad thought instead of taking a cab to the condo, that taking the Bus would be more fun. Yes, fun is what they said. After a four and a half hour flight with a massive suitcase, they dragged me into the bus because they thought it would be fun. <laughs> we take the bus a lot in PV and we love it. But after traveling all day, trying to adjust to the heat and humidity and having a large suitcase in tow, I would not suggest anyone do this for fun. L-O-L. -L. Okay, so am, am I right, you guys? That's what I said. She, she has said exactly what I say. Why? Why do you want to get out off of a, a long flight, walk in the humidity, go up and over that tote, that bridge, to, you know, grab your suitcases and bring them along? Oh, my God. You don't want to do that. And Debbie. Debbie, I am just so disappointed in you. I thought just for a minute, that you were, you were normal. I mean, you were normal in a cheap, kind of a frugal, kind of a, kind of a sense of tradition kind of a way, but normal. But, oh no, 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 you're not normal. At least I know that your husband's in on it too. Torturing your unsuspecting daughter. That is so wrong, Debbie. You're a poster child for my pet peeve. A bus from the airport. <clears throat> oh well. I gotta say this. It's great, isn't it, that we can get the inside scoop on airport transportation on this show. All sorts of it, right? So thank you, Tessa, for the note. And thank you, Debbie, for making my day. You guys are great. Now, on a more serious note, the Vallarta Botanical Gardens needs your help, guys. It seems that TripAdvisor has removed the garden from their Puerto Vallarta page and moved it to the Cabo Corrientes page. Uh, this is no bueno, no bueno for the garden, you guys. And I don't know if you remember our discussion, but Bob and I talked about the Botanical Garden several months back. 
And I have a clip where we talk a little bit about TripAdvisor. So let's go right over there and listen to that. I would uh, like everyone to look at the TripAdvisor website for Puerto Vallarta and notice that the Vallarta Botanic Garden is number three on TripAdvisor as the top in the top three things to do. We're number three out of 167 different things to do in Puerto Vallarta. So we're, we're within striking distance of the number two spot. And our goal is to become the number one attraction on TripAdvisor in Puerto Vallarta. Okay, so uh, if you want to stack the deck, everybody, you know what to do. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> yeah. I would encourage you to visit the garden before you wrote a review on TripAdvisor. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hold off, everybody. Yeah. Let's be honest. So, all right. That's right. That's how the TripAdvisor system works. So, yeah, you could come out. And, and I always recommend people when they tell me how what a great day they've had and the most fun they had on their whole vacation was coming here. I always encourage them to write a review. And they're more than happy to spread the word about the, the great times that are to be had here at the garden. Well, in 12 years, you've made this place number three on the list. That's impressive, Bob. Thanks very, very much. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Okay, so you can hear in Bob's voice how important it was, and important it is, that the gardens uh, remain in the uh, TripAdvisor Puerto Vallarta page. It's really, really important. So he asked me to share this note with you guys. Hola. For some unknown and unfair reason, TripAdvisor has recently taken our Vallarta Harding Botanical off their listing of attractions for Puerto Vallarta. The gardens have been open for 10 years now, and the management and staff has put a tremendous amount of work into making the gardens exceptionally beautiful and making progress in protecting the natural beauty and the heritage of this part of Mexico. One reward of all this endless hard work has been gardens trip advisor listing as the third best experience to have while visiting PV. As we all know, the gardens are a wonderful place to spend an afternoon, and the restaurant always offers wonderful meals. Losing their place on the Puerto Vallarta top 10 listing is going to be enormously detrimental to the garden's admissions and bottom line. TripAdvisor has made the decision to change the Vallarta Hardin Botanicals location to Cabo Corrientes for some sudden, arbitrary reason that they can't even justify when other local excursions are still listed as being located in Vallarta, even though they are farther away than the gardens. Please add your name to the petition linked below to support the Vallarta Botanical Gardens efforts to get their listing back as a well-loved Puerto Vallarta attraction. Okay, so I have a link to the petition in the show notes for this episode. So if you haven't already done so, go to the petition on my show notes and sign it. It just takes less than a minute. And, uh, well, unless you're slow, and then maybe it takes two minutes max. But, oh, well, okay, if you're drunk, I can't guarantee how long it'll take. But just look, sober up and sign the petition. Once again, it's in my show notes. Look for it and sign it. Now, uh, last week we talked about Sam. Sam with the email that I couldn't send uh, my taco stand and... Um, and Vallarta Family Restaurant uh, list two. So I will now really quickly give you some of my uh, top picks for local food that I think are going to be open in the Romantic Zone this time of year. Oh, also in downtown Vallarta, don't forget. That's where it's going to be too. Because for some of these, the first ones I'm going to give you, they're on the north side of town, above the Malacan. Uh, in the 5th of, of December neighborhood. you got to. These are going to be great tacos, you guys. First of all, there's Pepe's Taco. Uh, Pepe's is right across from the Pemex station. It's a great place for tacos al pastor. Real close to that and closer to the beach is a place called El Carboncito. And they make also some great tacos al pastor. They also have a baked potato that they'll stuff with meat or veggies or whatever you want. It really is good. Now, both of these establishments are late. They're late openers, and they stay open late. So they open at 5. They stay open until like 5 in the evening. I mean, 5 or 6 in the morning, I should say. Really, really, really cool, though. Uh, Now, also in that same neighborhood, uh, as you walk closer to um, to the Malacan, you will come across a restaurant called Lolitas. I love Lolitas. Uh, They have some great home Mexican cooking. Not a lot of English is spoken there, but really, really nice. 
Also, as you make your way south along the Malacan on Libertad, there is Una Familia, and they're also um, in their, uh, they have a, a place there on the Malacan, right across from the lighthouse. And Una Familia is great, very, uh, very good Mexican style family cooking. Uh, and of course, the one on the Malacan has got a great view. Uh, don't forget Burroughs Bar. They are on the beach. They're mm, they're closer to the pier, and uh, great place. Really, really cool hole in the wall. Don't miss it. And let's see for some great comida corrida, uh, which is the, the Mexican style fast food, which isn't fast at all. It's just inexpensive and just delicious. Uh, one of them would be Dianitas. The other would be adobes, and uh, for some real, uh, some real authentic pozole and some great uh, Mexican uh, Mexican home cooked food, go to uh, Senadoria Celia. And um, anyway, all of those are in the Emiliano Zapata neighborhood. They're in the, uh, they're also on the south side, so check it out. Now for uh, taco stands, right next to the big pharmacy of Guadalajara, right in the middle of the town. Uh, any of those, there's three of them there. Any of those will do. Uh, oh gosh, there's just so many. I I, I got to stop now, Sam. That's all. I, I'm going to get a show with my favorite taco stands and restaurants together pretty soon. So I hope that that's going to keep you busy and um, and keep you filled up and full. And let me know what you think about my picks. All right, let's get to the uh, let's get to the interview, shall we? The PV kid Jeff Musto and the property girl Debbie Baker are my next guests, and they don't work together, you guys. Um, but I thought they were cute. I thought I put them on the same show, right? I stumbled upon the PV kid many times over the years as I searched for vacation digs in Vallarta, but never met him until my last visit when I happened to rent an Airbnb um, from him. And I was, I was actually glad that he agreed to, to sit down with me for an interview because he's, he's a lot of fun. Uh, back in May, I did a meet and greet with listeners, and I brought my microphones to Kelly's Por Favor and Saloon. I don't know if you remember that. And uh, I did the interview with, with Jeff, M- Jeff Musto, the PV kid. He was one of three interviews that I could actually keep because it was a drunken, drunken bunch of people there, I got to tell you. Anyway, welcome to PV, right? (laughs) Let's get on with conversation that I had with Jeff Musto, the PV kid. All right, and uh, right now, still in Por Favor, Saloon and Cookhouse, and uh, I'm joined right now by Jeff Musto, and Jeff is... The PV Kid, right here in beautiful Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. He's a famous dude. Hey, thanks for coming, man. Hey, thank you. When I uh, made my reservations to stay here, I always, I almost always go to uh, Airbnb because I'm a cheap guy. And uh, so I found a place that I liked. And, I, and because I do um, interviews sometimes in my room... I wanted to make sure that it was okay to bring somebody, and so I kind of texted back and said, hey, can, can, can I bring somebody? And uh, the answer was, yes, you can, and so I made my reservation, and then Jeff comes back and says, hey, I listened to your podcast, uh, and I said, I want you on my podcast, so this is very cool. Tell us your path to Puerto Vallarta, Jeff. It's something I ask everybody that comes on the show. 35 years ago, I came to Puerto Vallarta for the first time. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a flight attendant for a major airline, and I came down here on a layover and fell in love with it. 35 years ago. 35 years ago. You don't look that old, man. <laughs> That's why they call me the PV Kid. Yeah. No <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, this guy looks like a young guy, and he's telling me, okay, go ahead. Go so ahead. after that, I uh, came down here on vacation, loved the place. I... Went back home. I brought my brothers down here. I brought my sisters down here. I brought my mother down here. I brought my father down here. I brought my friends down here. Everybody I brought down here loved the place. Ten years later, after coming here uh, many, many times, usually two or three times a year, I bought my first condo here in Puerto Vallarta, Uh, knowing that I was going to come back over and over, and this is a place that 
I wanted to be at. Now, I, I, I traveled the world, and I, and I knew Puerto Vallarta was a special place. Yeah, yeah. And you, yeah, you're a flight attendant. You go all over the place, right? Exactly. All right, so where's the place that you bought? I bought my first condo at Plasmar, which is on Los Mortos Beach, right by the Burroughs Bar, mm. next to the Park Lazaro Cardenas. Yeah, okay. I know exactly where that is. Yeah, and we're in Mexico, so there's dogs here. Uh, there's dogs in the bar. Oh, my God, there's dogs in the bar. Okay. How can that happen? All right, so uh, you, uh, you bought that uh, 10 years after the first time, so that's 25 years ago? 25 years ago, bought my first property. That's right when the Internet was starting. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I put pictures of my condo on the Internet, basically so my friends could see my condo in Puerto Vallarta. They all thought I was nuts. But I said, here's pictures of my condo in Puerto Vallarta. Little did I know that all of a sudden emails started coming in, not from my friends, but from just anybody who saw my webpage on the Internet uh-huh. wanting to rent my place. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, so like you're like early Airbnb, weren't you? Oh, this was before Airbnb, before VRBO, before TripAdvisor. This was before I actually had the very first page on the Internet about Puerto Vallarta. Uh-huh. This uh-huh. is way back in the beginning. Well, way back. Yeah. All right. So here we got Trailblazer, baby. Yeah. All right. Look at you, yeah. man. Okay. I know. JR's sitting over there going, no. I oh, actually had the first or uh, second, second oldest page on Vallarta. Ah, uh, okay. All right. All right. Hey, let's not fight you guys. All right. Here, I'm, I'm pulling them apart right now. Uh, this is a good thing. This is audio because this is getting ugly. Okay. So, all right, so you, you bought your first, you started, and, and you started uh, getting people saying, yeah, I want to rent this place out? Sure, and, and rented it out like crazy, and uh, it was so good, two years later, I bought my second property in the same building in Plasmar, and just did the same thing with that, just uh, put pictures of it on the internet, and got emails, and started renting that out. Okay, so now you've got two properties, and then what? Little by little... The owners, other owners in the building, came to me and said, Hey, yours is renting out like crazy. Can you do mine? Can you rent mine out like that? Uh, yeah. So I said, Yeah, I can do that. And uh, first, first owner, second owner, third owner. Before you know it, I had 22 people that I was representing their condos uh, and doing all the rentals for them. Wow. All right. So, like, you own that building, right? Exactly. Uh, excellent. So if somebody... Hey, hey down, boy, down. So if somebody is um, is going to uh, be looking at the Plaza Mar, chances are... They're going to be talking to me. Excellent. Okay. All right. And uh, the Plaza Mar, like, like uh, Jeff was saying, it's like right down on the beach. It's, it's, it's a great building. One of the best locations in Puerto Vallarta. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So now I met you, as I said, through this Airbnb, and that's different. What's, what's, what's with that? The Airbnb is a little different. Uh, they're not really my properties. Uh, one of the employees that, that works at one of the buildings I work with wanted to start uh, a little rental business, had the buildings, her father owned the buildings, um, and I, uh, I offered my help. Uh, I help uh, remodel, design, and get it ready to go, and then I helped her uh, list it on Airbnb. And uh, been doing gangbusters. Excellent. Well, uh, I like it. It's a it's a nice unit that you designed there. I gotta say, and it's in a great location. So, um, you know, I, I, I shoot myself in the leg every time I do this. But when I go to an Airbnb that I like, I I, I, I blow it. I, I, I take it. I take a YouTube video of it and I stick it on the web or I put it on my website. And before you know it, I can't get in anymore. <laughs> Is that okay if I if I do that with you? Yeah, people? I think it's okay. All right, okay. But to tell you the truth, it's pretty popular already. I know, I, I know it. Tell you, I got lucky. I got lucky to get in there. It's a neat little neighborhood, you guys. Um, it's uh, got uh, it's got a great just a family feel to it. Nice, nice spot. About just right off of the river, uh, just a block right off the river. Yeah, it, you can't get more local than that. I mean, it's really you're within the families. The kids are playing soccer in the street at night. People are selling things on the corner. Um, it's very local. Yeah, very local. Uh, you, you got dogs. You got chicken. You got roosters, not chickens. You don't hear the chickens anymore, right? But uh, but you know, I grew up with roosters. I'm good with it. No, no, no. 
the, it's it's actually a, a great great spot, great location. I love it there. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about how people can reach you, um, you know, online. Very very easy. PVKid.com or PVKid at PVKid.com is the email address. Okay, so you just got it all nailed down. <laughs> Very, very easy. Uh huh. With all the proper URLs and everything like that, and uh, that's good. That's the way it should be done. So uh, easy to find you. Uh, all right. Now let me ask you a couple of quick questions. Again, this is something I ask just about everybody who's in the know down Fido, and that is, um, if you were going to make a suggestion to a first-time visitor to Puerto Vallarta, what would you tell that visitor to do? Most of the first-time visitors to, to Puerto Vallarta come and stay in the hotel zone or in Nuevo Vallarta in an all-inclusive hotel. That's fine. That's fun. But when you're there, get out of that place for a while. Come into town, especially old town. Walk the streets. Go in the cafes. Go in the bars. Say hello to people. Everybody's friendly. No one's going to hurt you. It's very safe. Just get out and explore. Yeah, and get out there and walk through some neighborhoods in Old Town and and even downtown. I mean, it's 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 beautiful. It's it's it's, it's a and, great spot. Yeah, and and there's so many little little places that you can stop and eat. Just little, just little mom and pop places that you can just pop in. And you're just eating in their eating in their kitchen. You know, it's so nice. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So talking about eating, let's talk about um, some of your favorite places to eat. My most favorite place here in Puerto Vallarta is Adobe's Restaurant. Ah, okay. Tell it's, us about Adobe's. Adobe's is uh, very inexpensive with gourmet food. Okay. Yeah, we all like inexpensive, but gourmet, really? What, what's, what, do you, what do you eat when you go there? My favorite dish there is chili in Nagata. It's a, uh, a stuffed plumano pepper. It can be, either be stuffed with beef or with, with uh, shrimp. It has a walnut sauce over the top, uh, sprinkled yeah. with pomegranate seeds. Nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, all right. And that's your favorite? It's my very favorite. You know, whenever I look at, uh, actually, they got a sign in front of Adobe's, and it's got a picture of that dish. Yeah. It does. That's their, their trademark. Excellent. Well, I'm going to put it on mine, too. So, Adobe's, look out. You'll never be able to get back in again. Sorry about that, Jeff. You know, once again... We're going to close that place down for you. <laughs> you have to make reservations even in the off season now. That's what happens. You find a place, you tell everybody about it, and the next year you need reservations to get in. Yeah, there you go. I know that. I know that story. And the same thing with that, that YouTube video I'm talking about. With the so, Airbnb, yeah, yeah. the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Um, any other tips that you might have for, uh, for our listeners? I know you because you, you live here and just, you know, come on. you got something here. Don't be afraid. Mexico, especially Puerto Vallarta, is safer than probably your hometown. Yeah. There's very little crime here. Uh, people sometimes get freaked out. It's a foreign country. It's this, it's that. There's narco traffic. You don't see that in Puerto Vallarta. It's just a very safe town. It sure is. Um, all right. Uh, once again, tell everybody how to get a hold of you www.pvkid.com or you can email me at pvkid at pvkid.com And JR, I know that you've got a link to PVKid too on your website? Oh yes, uh, on the vacation rentals you can find PVKid. Excellent, alright so you know where to find that and now I'm going to put it on my website too so PVKid you're all over the place brother. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. Ah, uh, I love Jeff. And I love that dog, don't you? Now, my next guest is also in the property rental and management business. Uh, you can pick her place out because it's pretty easy to recognize. She's got a cute pink VW parked in front of her office, along along with this large pink high-heeled shoe. Uh, Debbie Baker as, is known as the property girl, and you're going to meet her right now. Today, I am with Debbie Baker, and she's the property girl right here in Puerto Vallarta. Debbie, thanks for inviting me in your office. 
Thank you for inviting me. All right. You're welcome. So uh, you may see Debbie's pink Volkswagen bug parked in front of her place. It's on Lazaro Cardenas in the south side of Vallarta. Um, where are you from and how long have you lived in Puerto Vallarta? Originally from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And I came to Vallarta eight years ago. All right. So you're a long timer. Very cool. Are you are you here all year round? Yes. All year. I'm fortunate enough to go home for two weeks, usually in August. Okay. Great. Now, it says on your business card that you get yourself involved in sales, although you say not too much, but rentals and property management. So tell my audience... What exactly you do in this, you know, this little pink office and with the pink car and all that <laughs> other good stuff? What do you do here? Um, mainly rentals. My focus is mainly on rentals and property management, and we do dabble in sales. Um, we have over 250 rental properties. Wow. We cap our management at 25. I just, I want to stay small and okay. personable with my owners. And... Uh, sales and usually people that we help with sales we end up being their managers and helping them rent their properties well that's smart right they use their realtor to uh, to help them get their places occupied for as much of the year as they can exactly it goes hand in hand who are your clients um are they canadians are they americans uh, from the u.s are they mexican what what do we got going i would say nine 95 percent of my clients are Canadians and Americans. I've got a very small um, clientele base of nationals. Um, I think just because of the type of rentals we do. Okay. All right. Do you like have people that call you up like out of the blue, let's say, and say, I want to buy a house, you know, without even coming down and looking at it? Do you, do you get calls like that? Yes. Calls and emails. And we find out what their needs are and their wants, their price range, their area, if they know it, and start sending them listings via the MLS or pocket listings. Okay. So, and you do have those. You have some people that you know who are getting ready to sell, but maybe haven't put it on the MLS. Maybe they don't want to, you know, hire, you know, a, a big uh, real estate firm to, to represent them. So you, you have those. Yep. The pocket right. listings so, we do. So yep. That's what she's talking about. You guys, when she talks about pocket listings, let's say that someone, you know, I'm pretty sure that you do like a lot of long-term rental work here, right? I mean, yes. people come down, they're snowbirds that come down from Canada. They come down from the uh, higher uh, reaches of the, of the States. So how do renters know um, what they're getting in regards to location, to neighborhood, like maybe even neighborhood noise. I mean, do they check that? Do they check that out with you? Do you do you check that out for them before they come down and make that big, you know, step to spend six months down here or four months or whatever they're spending? Yes, that big move. Um, a lot of people have already been here before. They know the areas they like, but we do have a lot of people that are fresh to Vallarta. And they depend on us to guide them to the area that they would like. So they give us a list of their, their wishes, their wants, their needs. And we make suggestions of what area we think they might like. And it's easy for me to do because I know all the properties firsthand. Yeah, because managing so many places, you probably have heard, you know, you get calls from people. Hey, what's going on down the street? Yeah, this way. Yeah, so you know areas, you know neighborhoods. Yeah, and we've seen the properties firsthand, so we know if it's in an area that's going to have barking dogs and roosters. Some people like the authentic Mexico, where other people prefer to the marina. They want something flat, quiet. Yeah, so you've got you got everything for everybody. Yes. Okay, and I'm sure that for those who who haven't been here and who are just calling just out of the blue, like, okay, I'm going to do it, um, you kind of tell them that. You say, hey, you know, what it you, you want it to be in town, you know, you want it to be quiet. Exactly. Yeah. They, they ask for something quiet, and then they tell me they want to be right downtown Puerto Vallarta, and I say, mm, maybe not. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. That's right. You will yeah. be going to, you're going to be going to bed when these people are just getting up in the morning from yeah. the bars. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, now, if somebody has a property that they want you to represent, 
What's the process that goes on there? We personally go over, view the property, take pictures, and add it to the website. What's the, what's the name of the My website? My website, yeah. <laughs> www.thepropertygirl.com. Okay, so if you go to, the, if you go to www.thepropertygirl.com, you'll find all your, rental, all your rentals are there. Majority of the rentals. We are actually revamping the website right now, and we're putting in a under $500 section, under a $1,000 section. We're broadening it, and we're adding a concierge page in there. Oh, good. Okay, so uh, you're, you're doing a little rebuild while, um, while it's kind of slow season. Exactly. Look, you yeah. know how to plan things out, right? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about tenant and landlord disputes. Mm-hmm. I would imagine that people that maybe don't use a service like yours might run into maybe some tenant landlord disputes here. Um, yes. Is the renter at the mercy of the landlord here in Mexico or is it the opposite? We get involved, unlike other companies that I've heard of that basically commit, collect their commission and back off, we get involved. We, both of them are our clients. The renters are our client and the homeowner is our client and we want to keep them both. So we get involved as much as we can and we've never had to escalate anything to a court level because there's always a solution okay yeah all right so you so it's probably what i I think i'm really what i'm getting at then it sounds to me at least that it's a good idea to have you it's a good idea to have a or have someone represent have yeah to have the owner represented by a rental company and also have the renter a lot of people that go on their own and find something. I don't want to use Craigslist as an example because we do advertise on Craigslist. Sure. Me too. And I do look at, uh, there are scams on Craigslist. I, I've, yes. had client, I, I've had people call me mm-hmm. saying, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm ready for the keys for this house. And I say, I'm not renting that house. I'm selling that house. And, and they had just given some guy 500 bucks. So, you know, I, yes. I use it. And you never know what happens, right? Exactly. Yeah. But if you're dealing with a reputable company that has a, an office front, a storefront, somewhere you to go, it's um, it's a lot better than yeah. just just a name and a number where you might be sending some money. Right. Where it could, you know, it could just look a little bit too good to be true. And yes. a lot of times that's what stimulates people to, to make a move, to make what I would say a, a kind of a, a bad error. Yes. An error in judgment that most of us normally wouldn't make unless our eyes got really big. <laughs> uh, now, with that in mind, I'm sure that you've had some stories being in your line of business, you know, here in paradise. Uh, and by the way, we are in her office. We're on Lazaro <laughs> Cardenas. It, it, is, Cardenas. it is a busy street. There are buses up and down the street, you know. That's minutely, right? right? Yeah, Not just hourly or it's whatever. It's very busy. <laughs> it is. So, hey, come on. This is the flavor of the Mexico. That's why we're here. Um, now, as I was saying, being in your line of business, you know, right here in paradise and so forth, uh, sometimes vacationers get into mischief, right? Sometimes yes. they act poorly and so forth and so on. Can you share any, maybe some real juicy <laughs> stories with our listeners? I mean, you know. I mean, Not I, naming I, I, names. I, I wanna, yeah, you don't have to name names. Just, you know, something, some, some stories about stuff that's happened. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> renters not behaving properly. Right, yeah. uh, While well, being a property manager of the properties, of some of them, we have received phone calls at all hours in the morning, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, very inebriated, uh-huh. very apologetic. They've lost their keys. So there's me getting up, getting dressed, grabbing my son, going out to bring them a second set of keys. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, that's not so juicy. That, Come on, there's got to be something better than that. Um, I mean, I did that, I did that just recently to somebody. <laughs> Another one, I actually had to bring the keys to the police station. Uh-oh. <laughs> they ended up getting arrested and... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bit embarrassing for them. But uh, I think when they they left everything they had basically in the in the bar or in the cantina uh-huh. and uh, asked me again and again, please do not repeat this to my wife. So <laughs> I shall not name names. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. They're probably not listening. <laughs> all right. So 
All right. Now, if somebody wants to start uh, maybe with the process of buying a home mm -hmm. here in Puerto Vallarta, and um, what is that process with you? What, what, would, you, what would you do with that client? Uh, the first thing we have to do is, if they're not in Vallarta at the time, send them options and narrow it down so when they do come to visit, we can have a, um, as many properties as we can have lined up to go view because we want to give them a good example of, of what, what, there is. what there is out there because there is a lot, a lot of different price ranges and areas. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you, you basically kind of send them like a, a home search, right? You, yes. You just say, here, go to town. What's your price range? You, you probably just set one up. and Yeah. We ask yeah. all the questions first so we know the area, the price range, their hopes and dreams, their wishes. We find out their budget and send them a bunch of different options to narrow it down. Um, what about home inspection? Uh, are there companies that do home inspection here that uh, certify a house? Not like there is at home in Canada or the States, I understand. Okay. All right. So it's, it's a little bit different. It is different. Yeah. So you just kind of, I, I imagine you just hire some good, you know, good inspector or, you know, maybe get a couple of good opinions and go for it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Um, all right. A couple of fun questions. Okay. Um, if you were to give advice to a first time person coming to Puerto Vallarta, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? Is this a renter? No, just a person. <laughs> just just a person. Saying, hey, um, you know, hey, oh, wow, you're coming to Puerto Vallarta. Well, let me just, let me just give you this little bit of advice before you come here. Okay. Just come and have fun and don't do anything here that you wouldn't do at home. Ah, okay. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And, what about now? I, I don't want to get you in trouble because I know you got lots of friends and, and people that you know run restaurants probably. And but what, where do you like to eat? What do you like? Um, where do you like to go for breakfast, for example? I'm more traditional. I've got little birria places in really? the the little backwoods of town. I like the more traditional Mexican. If I want to go for a Mangoes has got to be one of my favorites. I have a really nice brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay, and that's in town, Mangoes? And Mangoes is, is on the same street that Barracuda is on, and oh. it's four blocks south of Barracuda on the ocean. Okay, so just off the 5th of December area. Exactly, in okay. the Cinco de December. Wonderful. And, uh, and they make uh, tacos cerrados, or what do they make? They ha the brunch that they have there is, it's a very traditional. Um, oh. it's, it's really good. It's something you have mangoes. to... Mangoes. Yeah, it's called mangoes. 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 Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll have to check that out. Um, how about any, uh, any favorite lunch places? Lunch places... Barra, Barra Light. Barra Light. Yeah, that's yeah. a salad place. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm trying to eat very they healthy. Sal they got salad bars here? <laughs> they do. It's a very good, and they yeah. deliver to my office. Oh, wow, really? Yes. Okay, so that's in town, too. That's in town, yeah. All that's right. in the romantic zone. They always know when I phone because they ask me for the, the grande zapato because of the shoe I have out front of my office. Uh, yes. <laughs> so yeah. they know who it is. I got a picture of that. If you want to see what that looks like, you want to <laughs> get a picture of Debbie, you want to see what the office looks like here on Laz Lazaro, Lazaro Cardenas. You can check it out on the uh, post for this uh, particular episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show at uh, www.portovallartotravelshow.com. I'll have all the pictures. I'll have links to things that we talked about, too, as well as ways to get a hold of Debbie, the property girl here. Um, all right. So let's see. Do, um, do you have anything that you would like to add that, that maybe I haven't asked? Just everybody should come and experience Vallarta for once, because I know once you've experienced, you'll be coming back. It's it's paradise. It certainly is. Yes. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> well, that's why you're here, Debbie. That's right. <laughs> uh, Debbie, tell everybody again where they can find you and how to get a hold of you. My website is www.thepropertygirl.com. I have a U.S. number, Canadian number, and our local Mexico numbers as well. Easy to get a hold of. Excellent. I'll have all that on my website. If you don't, 
if you uh, if you can't get to the property to go about Tom, but just remember put the. That's the way to, to remember to get there, right? Because there's probably another property girl out there. Yes. So make sure you have thepropertygirl.com. Don't make that mistake. Debbie Baker, thanks for coming on with me and letting me uh, come into your office today and introduce you to my audience. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate it. Well, that should do it for this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. Next week, stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with travel tips, great restaurant and excursion ideas, and more. And until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to ViartaInfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour through him right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition, my friends. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs no more than if you were going to be using someone else, so just do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And once again, if you like this podcast, please take the time and subscribe and give me a good review on iTunes if you would kind of like Polly did. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And remember, I made it easy for you to do just that with each and every episode that I create. But if you haven't been to my website, you really need to have a look there. I have links to the places that we talk about, interesting pictures, and, and more right there in my blog posts and in my show notes for each and every episode of the show. So please check them out. I put a lot of work into them, and I don't do it for me. I do it for you guys. All right. So thanks to Jeff Busto, the PV Kid. And to you, Debbie Baker, the property girl, I have all of their contact information. I have some photos and links to their websites where you're going to be able to find some great hot properties to rent or lease for your next stay or long-term or short-term stay here in, in Paradise, Puerto Vallarta. Uh, you'll find all that info and more in the show notes in this episode at www.portovallartatravelshow.com. And thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler, signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos. Puerto Vallarta